Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about Criteo. Um, I invested in this company some time ago and yeah as part of my investment journal I would like to share with you my thoughts on why I invested in this company. We will be mostly doing some uh, looking in the past so because these investments were made in the past but I believe that there is still some potential upside for this company and um, yeah, we're basically around the price where I previously bought it the first time. So who knows what uh, what's in it for you? It's it's gonna be uh, mostly focused on valuation, and I'm also gonna be looking at the story, but from a numbers perspective. So it's a little bit different from what I was talking about yesterday, but I think it's gonna be interesting regardless. So Criteo, for people who don't know what Criteo does, I forgot to mention that just now. Uh, they are in the ad retargeting business, so if you have ever been on a website and you were like, okay, I, uh, I'm looking at flight tickets, for example, and three days later you get the same flight that you were looking at, and now you get it as, a, as an ad, well, that's basically what Criteo does. And they do it for the open internet, so obviously they don't own uh, Google or YouTube or something like that, so their ads are focused mostly on the rest of the internet, which is pretty big, but not as impactful as... Google and YouTube. Um, Criteo has an interesting business model in the sense that it is in the ad tech business and uh, yeah I like business models like that where there is like you're just um, the mediator between someone who needs ads and you supply them and you take a fee for that. It's a pretty simple business model um, and I think from a risk perspective it's a pretty good one. Um, and Criteo has seen a significant drop recently and uh, yeah I show you here the top as of uh, May 2017 and yeah it was at like 55 uh, US dollars listed on the Nasdaq and it went all the way down to about eight dollars per share and yeah I'll explain soon why this drop has occurred um, but first I'm gonna tell you when I invested in this company and I invested, this is the year view, so keep in mind that we are looking at a, a pretty even point at this point, so about the 18 US dollar mark. There was neg bad news here, I believe it was the risk of uh, like a watchdog from the government agency was going to look at Criteo because they suspected that they did something wrong with the data. It dropped and that's right around the time when uh, Criteo first came to my or came onto my radar I'd say and that's when I opened the position um, and I opened the position based on valuation and then well everything happened that we've seen recently the crisis and yeah it dropped until about 680 I believe it it, it lowered and I bought more around the eight dollar mark so on average I think I'm at a price around around here like uh, 10 11 dollars so all in all from if you look at the company now at the valuation now it's it's a pretty good uh, average buying price. When I looked at this company, it was mostly based on valuation, um, that it had my appeal at least. So um, the company had a market cap of, uh, eight, I think it was 900 million, and right now it's uh, 1.1 billion. So it's still pretty close to it, but obviously it's not just the market cap that appeals to me, but, um, Something else that was quite interesting was the enterprise value. So you have a market cap, let's say this was the time when I was looking at it, it was a little bit later, but, um, and then you have the enterprise value, which is lower than the market cap. That means that the company has more cash than debt on the balance sheet and actually in excess of that. So it has like 200 million extra cash. So, or net cash, you could even say. So that made, that caught my attention, for sure. And what made it even more appealing then is that the free cash flow was actually pretty consistent, and it was positive. <clears throat> so if you look back at it now, like okay, let's say at the end of 2019 you invested in it, from an enterprise value, which tends to be more expensive than the market cap, but in this case it's not the case. Um, your free cash flow would pay your your investment back in about six to seven years which a price to free cash flow from like six to seven is very good 
and obviously there was an enterprise to free cash flow and a price to free cash flow was a little bit higher it was around the eight euro mark or the eight times mark um so that made my that took really to my interest and the way you, when you think about it that this is a tech company so if you look at the tech industry you tend to not see this so if a company has been dropping like this and has such good valuation records it to me it, it deserves an extra look so obviously i started wondering about the consensus story and in this case i'm just going to use the numbers for the consensus story because i don't want to dive too deep into it <clears throat> and what you see here is the revenue and how it has been stagnating since 2017 2018 and afterwards it started dropping and now it's even still dropping and obviously this is a very good very bad outlook because if it keeps dropping then eventually you have no revenue left so from a continuity perspective this business was not very good i would say actually very bad like if if this track record would continue it would be having no revenue in about 10 years meaning no income and maybe the same costs so that was actually a very bad outlook from from them and that's actually had happened already so it wasn't just a prediction but it was actually just a negative uh, trend and the first thing you have to wonder then is why and then there has been a lot of negative news around this stock but let me first show you the past 10 years for this company so it might be a little bit uh, tiny to read this but in 2011 they had 113 percent revenue growth and 2012 is 93 percent 2013 2014 was like around the 60 percent mark and then 2015 16 17 was like around the 30 percent mark so these are pretty great growth margins and then the turnaround happened and then all of a sudden the stagnation and uh yeah just the revenue decreasing so that's pretty insane and why i like this company in particular as a uh, as an example i might add is that you can see that as long as the revenue numbers are good the growth numbers people will value it as a growth company the moment it does not grow anymore and that you see here then all of a sudden people are going to not value it as a growth company anymore and well they're gonna have a big sell-off and that could actually create an opportunity for a value investor who then might actually own up or own a growth stock in the future if they actually turn it around however if you and that's what i did i asked a few people who are more experienced in the ad marketing business about criteo and um they were just negative outlooks overall like they're in the ad retargeting business so they are focused on uh, third-party cookies which were disabled going to be disabled you had all these european laws coming together to protect the consumers you had um well the, the thing i mentioned before where like a government agency was going to look into criteria if they stick to the rules and st stuff like that so very negative outlook for the future but also in the near term like what could potentially become of Criteo uh, cost-wise. If you have to pay a big fine for whatever you did in, as a business, it could really impact you uh, hard. So these negative outlooks, I think if you just Google the company and news and you dive back in the past three years, you will find everything you want to know. And um, yeah, I, th I think it's worth, even if you are considering getting in on this company, it is worth looking at it. However, for me, this negative outlook and all these negative opinions actually created an opportunity for me from a fundamental perspective for sure revenue was decreasing but the cash flow stayed the same and from an enterprise to free cash flow valuation there was actually a point where in two years they would just pay me back and that's like okay that is without any growth assumed and that's why i added to the position as well however now my thesis seems to be playing out in my favor and um yeah, that's obviously a nice benefit so my downside was protected but let me just give you my main reasons why i invested in this company so for starters it was a tech company uh to the ad tech business so it was kind of an appeal to me to have some exposure to it even though it won't be the growth exposure that many people are looking for in that moment 
I like the business model. I like these kind of business model where you're just basically a third party who just collects a fee from like the, the in this case, the person who wants the ad available on the open internet and the person who wants to get some money for having ads on the internet. So on her his or her web page. So I like that kind of business model. To me, it's it's a lower risk than any other business out there. And yeah, I. I favor those kind of businesses, even though you don't see them in my portfolio a lot because they tend to be overvalued right now. So this company reached a point where it was very undervalued, even for a tech company, even for a normal company, I might add, like enterprise to free cash flow value of of two is um, well, so low, I haven't seen that. Like it's, unless a company is basically about to liquidate, it's very hard to find that. And uh, sure, right now it's trading at an enterprise value to free cash flow of about six, I think, which is still very undervalued for any tech business out there because all the outlook has changed and I'll get to that in a bit, but yeah, it's still uncertain. So you might still have some, or this company might actually have some more potential in it. And that's why I'm not selling at all. So the possible turnaround that was obviously when I was uh, investing in it for the first time. So they took on a new CEO who came from a different marketing company. And if you had listened to the, the earnings calls, you noticed that they were going to try to do something different. And that turnaround has basically happened. They are now collaborating and working with other marketing companies to create a, I, I guess, a different kind of cookie. I could just very simple. I made it very simple because it's quite a hard concept though, but that um, will basically be able to navigate through the current laws around it. And that would, yeah, would create um, a pretty valuable product for them. And obviously this is a collaboration. So they are all contributing, contri contributing in some way to this, but the, the fact that there is a possible turnaround right now and that's actually already materializing is, is a very good sign because my initial thesis was okay i don't have a lot of risk because even if nothing chased i'm gonna have my money back in free cash flows in about two years but the upside like if they are able to turn it around and it becomes a growth company again like you see the trade desk like you see google all that all that other ad marketing facebook all those uh, ad marketing companies who sometimes are a bit in disguise as well, but all those out there have pretty decent valuations from a growth perspective, like it's pretty high. And the moment it turns around and it shows 20, 30% growth again, even in the first two, three years, this could just mean a 10 bagger or maybe even more because just the, the sentiment will change and it's showing better numbers and who knows. And that possible turnaround is actually right now happening. So a lot of the uncertainty that I was comfortable with to open a position is now slowly fading away and right now it's still trading around the 18 dollar mark so a little bit higher than what i initially invested in but if you look at, at from from a sentimental perspective um the story is actually a lot more interesting right now as well while still having a pretty undervalued company and as i mentioned like to me there is from a fundamental perspective from the cash position like bankruptcy is is very unlikely Sure, like you have all these policies that could ruin it for the company, but from a fundamental perspective, this is pretty low risk, and that is why uh, I opened the position back then, and that's why I'm holding on to this position right now because it's still undervalued. And with that possible turnaround comes high potential upside. And yeah, I wouldn't say look at any other tr uh, ad marketing company for evaluation, but just assume if you look at their price to free cash flow ratios, it's insanely high. Uh, insanely unfavorable and the moment they have a stagnation then it's going to decline significantly like you have seen with Criteo and for me to invest it from the other side it creates this like low risk high reward potential instead of this okay if it keeps going like this I'm going to be rewarded uh, decently so um, that's it for today guys hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please leave a like and um yeah, I won't have a video tomorrow, but I hope to have one, um, I think, Friday again, because I have two busy days coming up. But um, yeah, stay tuned for, uh, for next Friday to have another video about another stock.